holding in my hand a carbon monoxide alarm, which I'm sure you've seen something similar. You may have a carbon monoxide and smoke detector in one. I have two separate ones, and this is in my basement where I have combustion going on in my furnace. And you may also have one also in your basement. You should also have one in your bedrooms as well. And test them often. I'm not going to press it for the video, but you can imagine if it works, it will beep and you should see a green light blinking every, uh, depends on the, the model, it might be every couple of minutes, every one minute, every three minutes. It's a very loud alarm, very loud speaker in there. And some can even be hardwired. I still have to replace the batteries on those in case the uh, power ever goes out. But check your batteries in these often. I have here is a handheld carbon monoxide tester. It's a carbon monoxide detector from zero to a thousand parts per million. This is chargeable instead of D batteries or um, AAA batteries or a nine volt battery. You can just charge this straight from any USB, from your computer, from a wall, and uh, C. Turn it on, and you turn the on button, and you hold the power button. And what it's doing now is it's going to heat, basically heat the sensor and calibrate it. Just testing to see if those work. I've just got enough battery power to do the buzzer and the vibrator. Now it's warming up, and and what you want to do is test it in a clean area where you know there's no carbon monoxide. So you calibrated it. So now you can take this sensor here and you can take it to where you need to test. It's got a battery. I'm sorry, it's got a flashlight button. In case you're going in uh, places in the basement that might not have a lot of light. Turn the flashlight off, a little LED right there. What it is inside there is a little electronic, but it's a... Uh, analog sensor. So it's a lot of electronics, but it's an analog sensor similar to that one. I'm only showing you this because I had bought these to try to make something like this myself, and you can wire it um, to something like a microcontroller, like an Arduino microcontroller. If you're into electronics, you can kind of do some of that yourself. And what it does is it heats up that little sensor, and then it tests, most of these sensors test for changes in and air moisture, but some of them have, this one is an MQ-9, some of them are specific for different kinds of gas. So this one would have a, of course, a carbon monoxide sensor specific for carbon monoxide in there. And I bring that up because I never really got this to work, and it's so much easier just to get a handheld like this where you can take it up to specific areas where you think you might have a leak which is a massive benefit over just having these, which just set sound an alarm whenever the carbon monoxide hits this. But before it gets to there, you can turn it off, clear the air, turn something on again, and see where it's leaking from, because it could be leaking from, from the vent, it could be leaking from the, the furnace itself, and then you take a look exactly where. So I have my furnace on. I'm curious to see... Probably should start it up. So right in there is where the oil is fired. And then here is where the exhaust is. That's where air goes in. This pulls open and air helps it go up, up the chimney. So as you're running the furnace, you can place it. You might have cracks in the chimney. You might have cracks. Check upstairs in your closets and look for the, where the chimney is because you might have a crack in it. This one's made out of bricks concrete parts over it and up in the attic there's just brick so if that pointing is a little off and i don't even have a flue liner in here at all it's just bricks so if you have an old house like that you can test to make sure uh, you don't have any issues carbon monoxide leaking out of it so again it's checking for 50 parts per million that's when it'll beep that's when it'll sound the alarm but it should test anything even one part per million it should show up on this all right so i have the oil fired burner on and I have calibrated this in a clean area where I know there is no carbon monoxide. Hopefully you can hear me talking over the boiler, the burner, 
in the boiler but I'm gonna be moving this around the connections around the combustion chamber and seeing if we have anything over about 10 parts per million about nine up to nine parts per million is okay for up to an eight hour period but if you have anything over than that then you'll have an issue Just testing the air over it, over the boiler. Tested the connections, tested the vents, ventilation. Make sure that this ventilation is blocked. If your flu is blocked, if you have animals or foliage up there, then some of those gases might not be leaving and they might be lingering. If you have a improperly installed furnace or any of these connections or holes in the connections that could be causing it. But I didn't see even a single part per million so it's pretty good. If you did find if your carbon monoxide alarm ever goes off, or if this shows a large amount of parts per million of carbon monoxide, then vent the area, evacuate, allow the area to clear, allow the air to clear, turn off the furnace or the gas appliance or whatever it is. Let the area clear and then get somebody over there to to fix the appliance or the furnace as soon as possible. And do not sleep there until you get that or turn on that furnace again until you get it fixed. That's a mess, isn't it? My little, my little gasket's holding up, at least the water's not leaking out and neither is carbon monoxide according to this. But uh, yeah, so good to have, um, it's portable. So if you need to take it uh, on a job, if you're a handyman and you want to see a uh, test to see where you might have um, a leak in a customer's house or have it on your own. Like I said, after, if it sounds the alarm in your bedroom or upstairs or at the top of the steps at your, your basement, clear the air and then turn on again and then see specifically where, where you're getting it from because that can be lethal. That can be fatal. Carbon monoxide is a odorless gas so you won't smell anything. If you have gas powered appliances they do add they add something to make it smell so that at least there's that but you can always uh, accidentally miss that so you want to make sure that you have uh, you have tools that can help you figure out where and then the light went off after a while to save the battery but um, so yeah that's normal zero I don't know if you can see that, that function can record them set the alarm settings recalibrate and let's see let's take a look while we're here we have the advanced menu input system password oh, I just have to hit the power key to go back I didn't have a so system settings date time for when you record notifications language and factory reset yeah pretty simple simple but helpful let's see Hit function, hit function again, alarm failure, calibration records and system records. There you go. Now when you want to turn it off, you can always just recharge it. Should be able to Oh, okay. Should go back to the main. And then holding the power off so you don't accidentally turn it off with one hit of the button and then recharge it there. So there it is. So that is the 
top test, CT580 carbon monoxide detector. They've been nice enough to supply this for me to be able to show it to you. And there will be a link in the description if you want to check it out. Thanks for watching. On the topic of handheld sensors, so I went through the uh, carbon monoxide handheld sensor. I just wanted to tell you that these sensors can be used in different ways. There are different types of sensors. This one here is for gas, so I talked about a gas water here. As you can see, obviously this one is a electric which I have now, but at my apartment before I moved here, I had a gas water heater. And the gas, what it is, is the gas will come in. You might have gas pipes coming in. You might have a uh, yellow flexible connector, or it might just be piped directly to a gas uh, pilot. And then on the inside will be the burners that will heat up the water. Whereas with an electric, it has uh, electrodes that heat up the water. And at my apartment, I had a gas leak. I was using a, a solution that bubbles up. But this is, in a similar way, it heats up. And you heat it up somewhere where you can calibrate it. Somewhere where there is fresh air. And then once it heats up, and you can take it, once again, I don't have video of when I, when I tested it, but I actually found a gas leak at my apartment in one of the pipes. And this thing went way up, way up to the red. And then I called and I had to have the apartment people fix that and replace that part. You could have a uh, dangerous situation with a lot of these, whether it be carbon monoxide or gas and in this way you can tell exactly where it's coming from and in my case I didn't call with just some vague idea of where there might be gas coming out from I was able to show them where exactly it came from and in a similar way you might find an issue exactly where so very precise and good to have handheld sensors all kinds of handheld sensors so it's always good to have them.